Good morning, I'm Cody with The Connected Camper. Today we're going to be talking about Solar Assistant. We're going to be talking about the positives, the negatives, and why I went with it for monitoring my solar power system, my inverter, and my solar charge controller, my batteries, and everything using that versus just plugging a Windows computer into it. Now, today it is a bit snowy outside, we're in Colorado, and so we're not gonna have any solar input for today. However, one of the features of Solar Assistant is we're gonna be able to look at the historical data that is on it. Now, the SD card that is in the uh, Solar Assistant right now will actually retain data for up to 10 years for the inverter and battery system that I have. So, let's jump right into it. First of all, I'm going to show you the generator running here outside and show you the snowy day that we're having. You can see the generator's charging the batteries at about 20 amps. Now we'll come over here and I'll actually show you the bay and show you where the Orange Pi LTS lives that's running Solar Assistant. So in here you'll see under this manila envelope in the back, there's just this little gray see-through box kind of that has a couple USB cables going into it and then power going out of it and over to the batteries. Now, then you see the inverter and the batteries, and then we're going to go back to the generator. And this is the outside setup. Now, on my Windows 10 machine here, you can see I have an application open called Watch Power. This is the app that would be used by my inverter if I was connected to my PC via a USB port to the inverter. Now, as you can see, there's several different settings in here that you can grab, like PV input voltage, charging current, everything else. We don't have data feeding into this right now because the inverter is not connected via USB to this computer, it's connected to Solar Assistant. Now, up on the screen, I'm also going to show you a video of my Victron Smart Shunt in the iPhone app. Now, as you can see, we're getting connected here, and we can see the state of charge, we can see the power going into it, the remaining runtime, we can see the historical data, we can see different trends, and it's a little bit clunky to go through here and look at the different trends, the state of charge, etc. Um, now, this is going to be something that I'm going to highlight here in just a couple minutes, but these two uh, connections here between Watch Power and Solar and uh, Victron do not talk to each other right now. I have to go on my iPhone to look at the Victron. I have to go on my computer to look at Watch Power. And that's the disparate information that I'm going to be talking about here. Number one is that when these two are in play, we do not have visibility into the two of them together. It has a battery capacity percentage here in watch power. However, that is just based on the voltage, and it's a pretty bad estimate when the inverter is actually used to looking at lead-acid batteries because it would just always think that lithium batteries are at 100% based on their uh, voltage curve. Now, that is positive, number one, of Solar Assistant, is that we have all of that information in one spot here. We have load information, we have grid supplement, we have battery, the, the power going into the battery versus coming out of the battery, and then we also have our solar in. Now today, as you saw in the earlier video, it's snowy here in Colorado, and so it's not the, uh, I actually have my solar panels shut off because they're covered up with snow anyway and it'll help the generator um, charge the batteries a little bit quicker. But this Solar Assistant brings all of my information into one place, and it also gives me historical data on it as well. This is just the past 24 hours, but you can see yesterday I charged my batteries with the generator at uh, 1.6 kilowatts at a time. Um, and then uh, right now I'm charging it at about 500 watts at a time just because it's a little bit slower. I've got time uh, before the batteries get up to 100% here. Now, the other positive here is that Watch Power, the app that I was just showing, is only available on Windows, whereas Solar Assistant can be via anywhere on a browser, so your iPhone, your Mac OS device, your iPad, um, anything with a web browser can get to it, as long as you go to the URL and then sign in with your credentials. Now, the other nice thing here is that it has one dashboard that unifies everything together. I can see my battery state of charge, and I can see it from the, sh the shunt itself versus the inverter, which is giving its best guess. So then the um, we can see that the current, we can see the voltage, we can see the cycles, the last time it was fully charged. We can see the, the deepest discharge and everything else there. And then we can also see the current data over here. Now, the... Um, the other nice thing is that in here, we can actually come in and make configurations to the inverter or to the battery itself. So for example, I'm going to come over here to configuration 
and I'm going to come down here to settings for the inverter. And I'm actually going to adjust my battery charging up by, actually I'm going to adjust it down because it's pretty close to full anyway. I'm going to adjust it down to 10 amps here. 10 amps by 24 volts is about 240 watts going in. And so we're going to see here that the generator is actually, the generator, which is supplying power right now, is going to go down in wattage going in because we have a 92 watt load plus the uh, the differential in conversion loss and everything like that. We are putting about 268 watts into the battery. And that's the nice thing is that, again, I can make these configuration adjustments wherever I have access to a web browser and connectivity to the internet for the trailer. The other nice thing here is that we have this all this historical data. I can go in here to our charts and I can take a look at solar production over the past uh, month for the trailer. So if we come in here and let it load up here, we can see the last 24 hours, but I'm actually going to expand this to seven days. And it's going to load here. Just give it just a second. Remember, this thing is running on a little mini computer back there. Um, we can see that here's our nice curves for solar. This was a nice, bright, sunny day um, where there were no clouds. And it actually got the battery all the way up to 100%. And then it shut down the panels and only was maintaining the batteries after that. And then you can see that the load power is also in this graph. The red bars are when I was running the generator and charging up the batteries. And so this gives us historical data for the last seven days. Now, past seven days, we don't have a lot past that because this orange pie um, is fairly new to me. My last Raspberry Pi actually had a piece of equipment fall on it when we were traveling and destroyed it while we were going down the road. So I unfortunately don't have a ton of additional data here. But we have data from the last seven days, which still shows us really good data and really good um, analytics into how our solar and how our battery system is performing. Now, the other nice thing is that Solar Assistant as a whole, because I mentioned earlier it runs on that mini computer back there, it has very low power requirements. Solar Assistant running on that mini computer only takes about 4 watts to run out of the battery. So, realistically, really nothing to run this thing. And then, again, we can come back over here and we can take a look at this power tab and we can actually set up smart adjustments with Solar Assistant. So we can tell it that if we're always plugged into utility, let's actually use our solar all the, let's use our battery and solar all the way down to 30%. And then let's adjust that based on this behavior here. I'm not using that right now because I primarily boondock, but one of the things that I do use is this battery shutdown protection. At 5%, I want the inverter to shut off. And so then with that, once the battery reaches that 5% state of charge, the inverter is going to shut down all of the uh, the loads so that the battery can recover, and I'm not going to run that battery all the way down to zero. And again, Solar Assistant does only support uh, a select number of inverters. And so I'm going to actually show you that here on their website. They have a list of inverters that are available to them. And so um, it, it does list very specific requirements like Victron inverters and everything else. We're going to come over here to help. And then um, is my inverter supported? So you'll notice that MPP Solar is listed in here um, as a Voltronic inverter. Basically, if it looks like this, it's supported. Inverters that are not supported, Victron is one of the big ones. Solar Edge is another big one. Uh, Renegy, they have a typo here, but Renegy is not supported. So those are some big manufacturers that are not supported because they don't supply data in a friendly format for Solar Assistant. Now, for me, I went with MPP Solar and didn't know about Solar Assistant at the time, and so this is just a nice benefit on top of it. But it does just connect via USB, and it works really, really well. We just covered why I use Solar Assistant. Solar Assistant might not be right for you, or your inverter might not be supported. But with my MPP Solar inverter, as well as my uh, Victron Smart Shunt, not Victron inverter, my Victron Smart Shunt, between those two, it gives me a nice single pane of glass that I can view from any platform of any device, whether or not I am here physically at the trailer. As long as I have internet connectivity and as long as the trailer has an internet connectivity, I am able to see my solar performance and make configurations to the battery or the inverter itself. And so again, this might not be a good fit for you.
Now, if you have any ideas for future videos, additional things that you want to see me jump into, or anything that I've kind of glossed over that maybe you want more details on, feel free to leave a comment below. Also feel free to like and subscribe, and or pass this along to friends that you think might be interested in Solar Assistant or any of my other videos. Thanks for watching, I'm Cody with The Connected Camper.